I know how much all of you have been enjoying the skills and drills that we've created for you here at Man Sewing. Today, we're gonna focus all on sync and rhythm, and better than that, I've got a special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do not recognize this wonderful lady next to me, this is Jenny Doan from the Missouri Star Quilt Company. Hi, Rob. <laughs> hey, Jenny, thanks for being here. And she is playing the role of free motion quilting guinea pig today. Did you oh, know that? No, I didn't know about the, the guinea pig part. No. But, but I'm definitely a beginner. Yes. Well, uh, a pre-beginner, actually. And I am so <laughs> thankful that you decided to come and do this with me. Literally, we were chatting about what would be fun, and she said, I would kind of be interested maybe in trying free motion. It looks fun, but I have never done it at all. I didn't even let her practice or warm up. So you were getting Jenny's very first free motion quilting stitching. One of the things we hear so often is how do we deal with rhythm and sync and consistency in our stitches? It's one of the first things, whether we're good or different than good at it, uh, it's something that folks often grade themselves or critique themselves on. And so I want to hopefully just help you get some real basic body mechanics and just a little bit of stitch <laughs> rhythm. All right. And what I'm hoping is going to happen, remember this is an experiment, is we're going to all see you improve with each and every stitch as I believe we all do. Whew, I hope so. It's a lot of pressure. Can you handle it? I can handle she it. She can handle it. Well, I'm game to try anything, right? I'll try anything once. Fantastic. I love that. Well, attitude. not anything, but most. <laughs> <laughs> most things. Okay. So, is it true that you have never free motion quilted? No, it is not true. Okay, good. <laughs> but you've tried a little bit. I, I have tried a little bit. So, I, I, if I quilt on my machine, it's going to be straight line. Okay. Because that I'm comfortable with. I'm not a doodler. Okay. Um, I tried to free motion quilt, and I made some shapes that kind of looked like Coco Pelli, and okay. that was like about uh, eight years ago. Okay. So it is not, it's, I would say it is not my thing. Sure. Can I be taught? Let's Probably. see. Probably. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. One of the easiest things to do for me as an educator is to literally hand you <laughs> the loaded gun and right. see what happens. So I'm going to slide this. Now, but before we go further, <laughs> I apologize. I realize that some of you might be watching the first version of free motion skills and drills for you, even though we have several other videos out there I want you to check out. So before we go any further, on the bed of the sewing machine already, and I have an extension bed out here on yeah. the machine. Okay. Folks at home, don't worry about this little black box. We are recording live everything Jenny's going to do. It's a camera. So don't worry about that. You don't need that on your machine at home. <laughs> this sew slip mat, or it's like the Supreme slider, it is a... Teflon on the top, and it's a silicone just so it sticks to the bed. Oh, cool. So this is going to turn our sewing machine into an ice skating rink. Oh, cool. Okay. Because That's I, helpful. It is. Because the more friction or drag causes fatigue. The more fatigue based on either friction or drag or body mechanics, the less time we get to enjoy our craft. So can any machine free motion quilt? Yes, actually it can, okay. but not all of them with as much ease. We do need to often get the feed dogs out of the way. That's a whole nother conversation for another day. Some folks like the feed dogs up actually because they can feel the rhythm. Oh, interesting. They're not moving. They're at zero, but they can feel the pace. I've never been much of a dancer. No, no. <laughs> no, no rhythm. <laughs> I'm not allowed to dance or sing. Anyway. But I'm gonna so, so do you okay. have your feed dogs down? The feed dogs are down right now. And then you have this other foot on here. Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. That is what's considered a spring or a hopping free motion foot. There are several different versions out there. This is the most generic style foot, and it's my favorite because it literally goes up and down with each stroke. And okay. so you can feel and get a little bit more rhythm from that too. So. And do you have a video on how to like put this on and? I have okay. videos, yeah. Because so, because that would be, that would stop me right there. It'd right. be like, well, we're, well, 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 that foot, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, no, I get okay. it. And you know, it's so funny because I forget how much of this stuff some of us know. So thank well, you for asking those well, questions. Well, it's natural for you. You do it. Right. This is what you do. Right. It's not natural no, for me. No, no, and watch, because I literally am going to give her very little instructions, although I'm going to bring the stool in behind you because okay. for body mechanics, I want you to be comfortably seated. So oh, good. I want to sit. People always ask me, is it easier to sew standing? Because I have videos where I'm standing right. and I'm like, no, right. no, no, no. All right. And, and now as you hands. reach into the machine, yeah, your hands, you, you're the director. Okay. Not only are you the talent, but you're the director, right? All right. So you've got your hands here. I often scoot them in a little closer to the needle as I become more confident. Okay. When you're first starting, a lot of folks want to do this and be further away, but that can cause a lot of pucker and ripple in the quilt. Oh, yeah. I would actually be probably pretty close to that needle. Right, right. And then this is the Jane machine. There's no speed regulator on this one, so it could go really fast when you get started. Let's start with the very, very first thing, which is a start and a stop. So 
what we're going to do is we're going to hang on to the needle thread itself. Okay. And you're going to take one stroke. And a lot of folks will do that. Like that? Yep, but I left you in needle down mode. Okay. So go ahead and take it out of needle down, if you will, for a second. Oh, Perfect. This, this one right here? Either way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, like a dental floss, slide that piece of thread under the foot, and it's going to bring the bobbin thread to the top. Oh, just... Uh, let me show you if I, I didn't give you very okay. good instructions. So we're going to take this kind of holding it oh, both okay, hands. Oh, okay, catch it. All right. And you're going to catch it like a dental floss there, except for I went over the foot. There we go. Oh, and okay. what that does is that brings our bobbin thread up to the top, Which too. keeps it from a globby knot on the bottom. Correct. Okay. Now, we actually got two stitches in there. So go ahead and take a couple of more stitches to start. Okay. So then after we sew out of that position, we'll cut those thread tails. Okay. So you've effectively done a start and a locking stitch, a knot basically, and you have your thread tails on the top. So you're already that much more successful. Whew. See Holy how great you're smoke. doing? Isn't that easy? I'm almost a pro. Okay, and we'll see you <laughs> next time. <laughs> no. No, let's no. learn. Let's, let's learn. learn. Okay. <laughs> so why don't you just try to kind of free motion a bit of a straight line? And I'm not going to tell you to go towards you or away from you. I want to see what you okay. feel like doing. All right. I'm going to go this way. Okay. And my stitches aren't the same size. It's okay. Whoa. Oh, I went right over them. That's okay. I'm going to stop you right there if okay. I can. So one of the first rumors we have at home is if you cross threads, bad things will happen. I want you to notice <laughs> that Jenny and I both have slightly curly hair, but we were not struck by lightning. Okay. <laughs> Well, today, anyway. That's right. We locked the studio door, so there's probably a pile of the quilt police outside trying to get in to offer us citations, but it's not going to happen no, today for you. No, not going to happen today. No. And what's neat is they can see that at home. And can I the cut these? Yeah. There okay. should be little scissors next to you. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. Now, with that... So it's okay to cross. It's okay to cross. It's okay. okay to do anything you like. Just like everything else you teach in quilting, it's your thing. It's okay. what you want to do. But there are some things that people look for in free motion machine quilting. So right now, your stitches, in my opinion, are just a little bit longer than most free motion machine quilting stitches. Which means I'm moving it too fast with my hands, or I'm not sewing fast enough with my foot. With, I thought you one? said you've never done this before. Which one is it? It's both. Okay, <laughs> okay, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. And if we could just focus on this concept for the rest of the video, this would be awesome. Okay. It is the rhythm or the dialing in of the stitches. So yes. It is the balance between foot speed and hand speed. So what I teach folks to do is learn to run the machine slow okay. until they feel like the stitches are getting big. All right. Oh, slow. Mm -hmm. Slow. Oh, those are nice. That looks good. Okay, and then if you start to feel like you're waiting on the machine is when you start to pick up your foot speed, but then you also have to increase your hand speed. I feel like I'm dragging it. Okay, great. So give it a little more gas pedal. And then after a few seconds, you'll start to try to feel the, that catching up of your hands. Oh. oh. You are awesome. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel awesome. Okay. <laughs> I feel, I feel, I'm not a doodler. You no, know? So I have put you in the worst possible position ever. I gave you a blank piece of fabric and said, do something you've never really done before. No, I think it would be easier for me if I were like in a little box. Right. You know? Meaning like, a, a, a patchwork box. Like I could, I, like, like this feels like this huge space. Yes, it does. It feels and, like no boundaries. Yes, it does. And a lot of us teach this way. And I did this to you on purpose as well, because that can Meanie. be. I know, aren't I rotten? And the back is just the same. So I can't even flip it over and show you there's a beautiful floral that I want you to follow on top of the floral. Yeah. So yes, if you're setting up sandwiches for the very beginning, let's try something else. Will you hit your thread cutter for me, please? Sure. Thanks, let's try it out. All right. Okay, because what I also have is one of my squares or my blocks that didn't go so well. So you can see here that I've ripped this out so many times, I can't get all the, the thread tails out. I have always found that quilting like this on a giant wide open canvas is very intimidating. It does feel intimidating. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to do. And a lot of folks want to practice and they want to try and they've always heard just start with a muslin sandwich. And that just doesn't work because it's so wide open. It feels too... It really does. So I like to start people with like a big floral print. 
like a fun Amy Butler oh, and then you or follow Bella it. Wells or something. Like that. You just trace. Oh, You're just tracing. That's a great idea. And I don't have that for you here today, but what I also have found is a lot of times we teach not looking at the whole design or the whole quilt. Like I'm not going to quilt the whole queen size quilt right. in five minutes, but I might be able to quilt this triangle in 15 minutes. So I'm only going to think about this triangle right now. And the other thing you can often do, like you said, you're not much of a doodler, right? Mm -mm. You can do straight line work just as well. So I still want to keep talking about stitch consistency for folks, but I want to show a couple of different things. So okay. one of our other good quilting rules is we start near the middle. Okay. Okay. I'm going to drop your pressure foot for you because I put it up and I didn't tell you that. All right. So why don't you go ahead and practice your start one more time? And that was with pulling that needle oh, okay. thread out. So I need like two stitches. Okay. And then we're going to pull this, and I, I should have had more thread, shouldn't I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, uh-huh. But I got it. And I'm what? hoping it doesn't work for you, because I might be able to show you another trick. It didn't yep. work. That's okay, because the other trick is, yeah, go ahead and try again with a little more thread. There you go. And, and put it underneath, or uh -huh. stitch? Uh, first, take another rotation by hand. Okay, oh, rot by yep. hand. Okay. There you go. That was a fast rotation. There we go. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if it doesn't, hold, I'll pull the whole quilt to the side, and then it'll bring it out. Oh, more. okay. Well, yep, so you okay. can see where that came over there. And All it's right. a little easier to get your hands and work with. So what I want you to try to do is go ahead and just lock that stitch in for me. Right there where I'm coming out? Mm -hmm. Okay, because I'm not right in the middle. That's okay. All right. And then just drift over to this line close where that line, perfect, is right on the outside okay. of your foot right there. And then while you're stitching this time, there we go. I'm going to ask you to watch the edge of the foot along the seam. Okay. Now you have a guide. All right. Wouldn't this be easier to do with the feed dogs? Absolutely. If you're doing straight line stitching, but I want to point out something to you. Okay. I took your mind off of the design. Yeah. Look how great your stitches are. Check this out. They're perfect. I am amazing. And your feed dogs are down. <laughs> my feed so, dogs are down. Remember, as artists, oh when we get overwhelmed in the concept of what we're, we, get, we get stressed about, we tighten up. Yeah. Body mechanics have to be loose. So okay. you are being a wonderful guinea pig for me because this is what I was hoping because I have a feeling a lot of people at home that are watching the video are feeling this way and they don't have this interaction because a lot of times you watch the video, you right. read the book or whatever, but you don't quite get the, oh, wow, in that situation, that's how we did it. So now that you've been able to show yourself that you can really do it, right, then what you start to do is practice getting that rhythm of the machine and the rhythm of your hands in a motif or a design that you're comfortable with. So whether you're tracing Do you ever a draw flower, a design on there? I do often. And really? sometimes I'll draw. You want to try that? I've got a chalk no, pencil. No, it's no, it's all right. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, I would. Yeah. I mean, I would probably feel more comfortable tracing a design. Right. But I think for me, part of the stopping thing is that... Um, is that I don't have a design and you know, I wish I could just sit down and play right, you know And I, I don't feel that's something that I would like to learn how right. to do I don't feel comfortable with that. You know, there's a couple of other I think all of us could trace Absolutely. You know. John Flynn teaches it this way. Mm -hmm. He says get a coloring page that you like Let's say it's Christmas time, right? And you wanted to do uh, a cool Christmas motif holly sure okay holly leaves and berries and stuff get that coloring page Take a pencil and trace it 20 times mm -hmm. on a pencil. Then go to a blank piece of paper and start drawing it. Then immediately return the to the sewing memory. machine. You'll get the muscle yeah. memory. And if that doesn't work, you could always draw the holly over and over again on the quilt sandwich. Now, for me, when I mark, I get into the overwhelmed feel mm -hmm. because the marking that I want to stay on the line. So my markings sometimes are words. I might write into this block, oh, I might write the word swirls. Right. And therefore, when I get there, I know I'm doing swirls because the other was straight line and maybe I went through and I, I chalked okay. it out that way. So one of the hardest things to do in free motion for me, especially being so wild and ADD, is that I can't stay focused long enough unless I do set a rule. So let's say in this particular square, I'm going to make three straight lines and then a curvy line. So okay. let's try that for the end of the video. I, what I now want, do I just go backwards yes, or do I have that. to turn this around? No, but you could. All of these questions, maybe we can make like a four hour long video this week. <laughs> you have so many great questions. I don't think they'd like that very much. Look at you adjust. That was awesome, Jenny. Did you see how you just adjusted right yeah, there? Yeah, because it was too slow. Right. So while you're playing with your three straight lines, I'm going to point this out. Big, big stitches come from 
a slow machine and fast hands. You're moving your fabric too quickly. Tiny, tiny stitches, they come from a very, very oh. fast machine and very slow hands. Oh, I forgot to turn. I'm, I'm getting, I can't get my curves, I'm going wrong. I'll oh, I've got another question line. I've got to ask you. One of my um, followers out there is a left-handed person. Yeah. And I remember if I correctly, you're left-handed, correct? I am. So when you're free motion quilting, do you find that you have a lead hand? I mean, I know you've been doing it for all of eight minutes or 10 minutes or whatever that little thing says across the bottom of the screen right now, but. I wouldn't say I have a lead hand. I would say I need a massage. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that, is that a, yeah, there we go. a request? Um, I was feeling like as a right-handed or left-handed machine quilter, just like a automobile pilot, I, I, I drive. I don't steer left-handed or right-handed. But I cut right-handed. You know what I'm trying to say? I cut right-handed too. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. So um, I don't know that free motion has a left-handed, right-handed. No, you're, I think you're pretty evenly. It's like uh, driving. For, yeah. Okay. I wondered if you felt the same way. Yeah. I think, I think it pretty evenly, especially if you put your hands... Uh, now, when I'm sewing, sometimes I do this, right. but I wouldn't do that free motioning because I'm worried about the fabric being nice and flat. Okay. I think. I can't stop. You're asking so many good questions. Okay. So when I put you in the director's mode, mm -hmm. you were automatically basting. Mm -hmm. You were automatically smoothing for me. Right. Okay. The other thing I want to show one, because you asked another great question. And I think this is another myth we need to dispel right this moment. Go ahead and drop your needle uh, down position on for me. Uh, do a few more stitches, if you will. And, oh, I'm sorry, go uh, and, and oh. travel. <laughs> okay. So there you are, and now you go ahead and stop. You got yourself into a terrible spot. Mm -hmm. You asked earlier, can I rotate the quilt? My rule of thumb is if the needle is not moving and down in the quilt, you may certainly rotate the quilt oh, okay. any direction you need at this point. Okay, so then, so then if you wanted to. Absolutely. Okay. Maybe you found that you're better forward than backward or backward than forward. You can always adjust the quilt so that you're driving down your best possible road. You know what it looks like to me? Um, it looks like I do good as long as I keep going, but when I stop, my stitches get really big. And you know what? For me, when I start up again, I often take a couple of little stitches in the same place and you'll see that in my work too. And so yeah, you're learning to get the pace of the machine and have your hands adjust like you did in that first or that second run when you adjusted. And honestly, so for me, you know, people say all the time they'll compare themselves to other quilters. And um, and I tell them this is their journey, you know, and uh, and it's it's all about practice. And if they sew an hour today, tomorrow they're an hour better. So is, is that actually the same thing completely true with this? It's really just practice? I believe that 99% true. There's, there, is there, do you think there's people who have a talent for it? I think that people, uh, like even maybe myself, because I love to draw, mm -hmm. I took to machine quilting fairly quickly, I believe. And fortunately, that was a good thing for me because I really, that's what I wanted to try. And so the free motion quilting for me is what got me into quilt making. So I'm glad oh, that the Lord blessed me with free motion quilting as a skill set because that's what I wanted to do. I didn't want a piece. If, if he'd given me piecing as my skill set, I would have been so bummed. All right, what about, <laughs> what about uh, like, I would never, ever think this was good enough. What about that critical, you know, how, how you're critical of your own stuff? Well, and, so, and you'll see somebody else's sometimes and you'll be like, well, mine's not too bad. You, you know, know but, yeah, I have seen quilting that I look at and say, if I could only, if I could only be like that someday. And then I also remember that there's a lot of different skill sets and a lot of different levels. I don't think comparing ourselves as artists to other artists is healthy. I think being inspired by others and motivated by others is a good thing, but I don't think trying to make my work like somebody else's work is a great thing because it's not my work if it's their work. You know what I'm trying to say yeah. a little bit? And I will also say that there are times where I have bad days. I've tried oh. to machine quilt when I was in a real hurry and or when my body was very tired and stiff, maybe I've been out playing too much, and my shoulders and neck, and so there are... Have you noticed that I'm like guiding this with yes. my arm? Yeah, and that's my, yeah, yeah, you start to push it. And it yeah. I'm like, okay, wait, this can't be right. No, so there are days where my body is not ready and my brain is not ready to free motion quilt, and nowadays I am learning to stop when that happens. I go back to working on a different project. Oh, okay. So if I'm overwhelmed and I can't release whatever is, is in my brain, then I've learned not to, to do the machine quilting because the machine quilting is what I enjoy the most. And it, 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 why do it if you're not really prepared for it? Do you find if you're a fast sewer that you're probably a fast machine quilter? Like I'm if, not afraid of the machine as much because I'm used to it running fast. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, so 
Well, like right now, I'm trying to make these loop-de-loops, right. and my stitches are super big, and I'm thinking it's because my machine maybe isn't running fast enough. My I hands are going faster than my feet. Is that right? You are absolutely correct. Okay. This is... This is <laughs> are you addicted already? Well, no. No, I'm not. Um, but... It's a, it's a, it's a lot more, um, it's a lot more body work. Yes. You know, you're, you, you're, you know, I'm, I already feel worn out, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right. Um, so, you know, for me, uh, I would have to practice this a lot to be comfortable with it. Yes. Oops. And, and I like the, the hour, um, you know, every day you put in an hour of sewing, you're getting an hour better and better. I totally agree with that. On some of our other skills and drills videos, we have printouts where people can do just like John's idea where they can go and they can trace. Yeah. And then they can sew, they can sew right on top of those. To, they're, they're skill builders. And I actually start those videos in straight line. Then we do some swirls and we work up to feathers, those kinds of things. I so wonder I wonder if people get chapped lips when they do this a lot, because I'm always biting my lip or whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all get a little hyper focused when we when we get into doing it. So one of my favorite uh, patterns are the pebbles, right. the little pebbles. Right. And I've tried a few here and they're just not pretty. Is there a trick to those? There's two tricks. Yeah. Yes. Uh, might be easier if I show you versus... Awesome. Oh. Um, at, least, at least then I'll know that we'll have like two good pebbles or three good pebbles on this piece, right? Uh, no, not necessarily. <laughs> Remember, I'm going to do this here. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a drill set that we have that's called Big Circle, Little Circle, and it's in our Free Motion Basics video. Oh, good. Video okay, so you can go watch that. And... Yes. All right. And Perfect. what it is, is it's training your hands to be able to do a circle in one direction and a circle in the opposite direction. Okay. The key to pebbles is completing the circle. A daisy is a circle with half circles on it. Pebbles go all the way around. Okay. And then you might be more interested in cobblestones because those aren't all circles. Oh. Cobblestones are squares Maybe and triangles and about. circles. Right. So if I'm going to do this, I'm just going to come over here so I can see. Now my big circle this way, then I follow it through and I go into a little circle. Oh, you heard me get a little away from myself there. Big circle. Okay, so if you were on a quilt and you did that, would you just keep going? Heck yes. Okay. Yeah, all I right. wouldn't stop. All right. Yeah. <laughs> And then for your pebbles, and I'll let you do this, then what we want to do is we want to do those same kind of circles, and then you can do different sizes, but instead of stopping here, we're going to come all the way around, find ourselves another little opening. Did you see how I did that? I did. I See, I love those. I think those are really cool looking. And that's really, you know, it's just practice. And yeah. you have a video on that. I do. Uh, awesome. We have a video with the pebbles, and we, especially that big circle, little circle drill. And it's really great because if you can quilt a circle, you can just do anything. I oh, really awesome. believe that. So that's a good that? practice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think you're going to get me off of this anytime soon. I was soon. afraid <laughs> that was the case. So you work on your pebbles I and will. I'll go ahead and start prepping out the next videos. I don't think she's going to stop everybody. So I'm going to say thank you, Jenny Dunn, I don't for being think I here. Am. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. You were awesome. We'll catch you all next time right here at Man Sewing.